This combination of relentlessness and courage to be different is also the formula for being a leader in the work of true reconciliation. You know, too often we are enamored with performative or symbolic dimensions of reconciliation. And indeed, our political leaders often pursue performance reconciliation over actions that are actually impactful. They tend to label everything as an act of reconciliation for short-term political gain out of self-interest. Performative reconciliation is easier, costs less, and is less risky. Of course, you can still mess that up and reveal your true colors. That's what we saw on the first Truth and Reconciliation holiday, or national holiday. But the point is that the real work of true reconciliation can be hidden by, from view by the symbolism and charades. Or worse, the symbolism becomes believed to be a substitute for true reconciliation. Reconciliation slacktivism, where thinking a carefully placed tweet or a statement is a substitute for tangible outcomes. Performative reconciliation is not relentless and it does not take courage. What does take courage and requires relentless efforts is to be what I have called an in-betweener. Let me explain. One of the legacies of colonialism is the building up of invisible and visible barriers or silos between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples and between Crown governments and First Nations. We do not understand each other and our ways of talking and viewing the world nearly as much as we need to, nor as much as we think we do. And we often operate and make decisions based on false assumptions rather than a real understanding of each other. If we are going to live side by side, none of us is going anywhere, then we need to understand different ways of being. This is important the reverse of assimilation. Now I experienced this around the cabinet table and yes, there are many stories that I could tell you, but I remember sitting around with close advisors after me such meetings and having a conversation, looking at each other uh, and remarking, either we, I am speaking a foreign language or everybody else around the cabinet table is because nobody seems to understand anything that I'm talking about when it comes to Indigenous issues. Colonialism has constructed silos, and they are very much still alive and with us today. We need to break them down, and the way that we do that is to cultivate in-betweeners, individuals and organizations learning to walk between and translate between the silos. It is not easy, it takes courage, it demands being uncomfortable, it often means breaking away from and out of expectations. In other words, being a leader.